Well, hello and a, a huge warm welcome to everyone who's tuning in with us right now. We love the fact that you've joined us today. Um, I'm Phil Briggs, I'm the Senior Partnerships Manager for Compassion UK. And um, it's a real privilege to be able to bring to you today on the ground in Burkina Faso. That is the nation um, that we're going to be focusing on this evening. So if you're joining us right now, it's likely you perhaps invest in the life of a child and sponsoring a child in Burkina Faso. And we want to say thank you so much. You know, you're making such an incredible difference. But today um, we're going to be uh, interviewing my colleague in Burkina Faso. And he's going to be telling us all about the, the incredible differences being made right now and, and some local information and some of the impacts that's happening with the local church in the country right now. But if you've joined us today, and maybe this is your first time, we, we've got a chat function available for you to comment in today as we go through this event. Um, but we'd love to hear from you, let us know who you are, where you're from, uh, maybe which local church you're a part of if you'd like to do that, and maybe the name of your sponsored child, it's totally up to you. But we've got a team of people who will be able to respond to you throughout this event. So just more to say, we want to encourage you to get involved this, uh, this evening, and um, we'd love to hear from you as we go. But with no further ado, I'd love to introduce to you now, Karina. Are you there? Would you like to join me? Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm very, very, very happy to be with you, dear sponsors, dear Phil. It's a great joy for me to be really connected with you for this time of, uh, of sharing uh, from here, Burkina Faso. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this evening. It's a real privilege to be able to speak to you today. How are you? Really, I praise the Lord. I'm very, very fine. My, my two doctors are fine. My wife is fine. Everybody's fine here. All the colleagues in Burkina Faso are greeting you. We are all fine by the grace of God. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. Well, we know this evening um, that you're going to be telling us about um, the impacts of COVID-19 in Burkina Faso, but all, of, all the great things that are happening as well, but you're going to bring some information to us that's going to be um, somewhat impactful, I would imagine. So thank you for, 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 for making space with us this evening. Really appreciate it. Um, I think it's really important um, at this time more than ever um, that we should be aware of, of what we need to pray for, um, for Burkina Faso. Yeah. We've been hearing things um, of, of a triple crisis in Burkina Faso, and I wondered if you could expand on, on, on what is meant by this. Okay, really, thank you very much. Um, it's true that we have been uh, really undergoing some uh, crises. First of all, we have um, experienced some flooding here in Burkina Faso and uh, it uh, affected uh, at the national level uh, more than 2,000 uh, people in Burkina Faso. And uh, concerning our beneficiaries, during this period of flooding, uh, we have seen many thousands of them who saw the, um, the houses destroyed and uh, also uh, some families, the farms were destroyed by the waters and uh, we also had some uh, families where uh, the cattle, sheep, goats, and so on that they used to, uh, to live with and to, uh, well, the economic, in fact, get uh, in fa uh, affected, I can say, by this flooding. So this flooding happened from mid-August to mid-September. This is the first crisis I want to talk about. And... Uh, for the floodings, Compassion has really stood like uh, a supporter to all those beneficiaries. And uh, our local churches have uh, provided some, uh, some support, some, I can say, urgent support to help those families. Now, at the national level, we have designed a great project so that all those beneficiaries will have their houses rebuilt oh, so, yeah they'll have the houses rebuilt and also we have in this grid project some uh, some relief you know so uh, they will be supported with some food hygiene kits and so on so it's a very a huge project just wow. to help uh, beneficiaries and their families concerning the flooding 
So, as you said, it's a triple crisis. So, in addition to the the the, the flooding we are we experience here, as you know, uh, COVID nineteen also is um, uh, really something uh, we are going through in Burkina Faso. But uh, we praise the Lord. Uh, to date, in Burkina Faso, uh, our our beneficiaries and uh, I can say the churches, they have been impacted, but now we have only one active case of COVID-19. Wow. So we praise the Lord for that and we say thank you for your prayers. But at the national level, uh, it was really not easy because uh, uh, since the outbreak of the crisis in, uh, in March, we had some lockdowns, we had some quarantines, some uh, schools were closed and markets were closed. And really this impacted the, the families that are uh, really low incomes. So when this uh, crisis came, Compassion couldn't just uh, stand and look things going on. So we have designed um, a, a project we call Disaster relief found. It's a huge project that is, um, we started implementing it since the month of July. And for this project, uh, we have about um, 50,000 beneficiary that will receive some food and also, uh, so I can say they have already received, they received some food in August and September. And also we have some uh, hygiene kits. We have some, uh, there is also a component of IGA in this project. So it's a very important project we are implementing here that really helped Compassion to stand as a great supporter to all these beneficiaries that were impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. There is also a part of, uh, as I was saying, income generating activities because we know that giving food is good giving nose mask soaps giving uh, gels is good but we want in fact to build local economies so there is this uh, component of uh, income generating activity that will also be implemented so that uh, uh, 15,000 households will be impacted and have some, some income. So this is what happened concerning the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, as you said, the third one is um, uh, terrorist attacks here in Burkina Faso and uh, insecurity. So this is a situation we are uh, undergoing since I can say five years in Burkina Faso. It is really not easy, but uh, to date, uh, things are improving, and uh, I can say Compassion Burkina is not um, a direct target. Our beneficiaries are not direct targets, but we have, we, we do see some consequences. For example, some of our churches are in areas where schools are closed because of uh, insecurity. So these beneficiaries cannot go to school because there is no school uh, where they are. So this is uh, one of the, of the consequences of the terrorist attacks crisis. And uh, we also have in the country about 1 million persons that were obliged to move from their homes to come in towns so that they can get some supports there. So this is the, the situation, but it really didn't prevent compassion from still supporting beneficiaries. We don't, our centers are closed because of the COVID-19 crisis, but the support is continuing and we are making sure what supporters are giving is reaching each beneficiary and meeting his needs. And we see the difference it is still making and mostly in this situation of uh, Tribal crisis. Yeah. <laughs> well, Harina, that that is a lot to take in. Um, and, and, you know, first of all, I'm, I'm listening to you talk about what's happening. And I, I'm just so sorry that 
you and and the rest of the nation of Burkina Faso are going through such a difficult time. You know, I, I think about um, here in the UK and the, the lockdown we've experienced, but listening to the difficulties of some of the some some of the families and and, and the nation are going through in terms of, you know, the flooding really strikes me on top of COVID nineteen and yeah. people losing the, their homes and and their livestock, everything that they have really is 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 what yes. what, what you're talking about, yeah. And I, I can't imagine, but praise God that on a national level that, um, you know, that you will be known as rebuilders of walls, of rebuilders of homes, yeah. and, uh, and, and that these families will, will, will have their needs met. I just think that's amazing. Yeah. Um, but in terms of compassion as well, and, and just still responding to the needs in this time to make sure that they've got medical care and attention, um, that's just fantastic. Yeah. And um, just wonderful that the church is, despite being closed, um, Haruna, Haruna, that despite being closed, it's still being the hands and feet of Jesus at this time. Um, I, I, with all that to say, I'm sure you've got lots of stories, um, but I wonder if, if there was one way you'd seen or heard of, of the church making an incredible difference in this time, um, being, being a light in, in what is a dark time right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is, um, I, can, I can talk about many stories. I'll just talk about one here, you know. The story of Nuratu is that her father used to work as a seasonal worker in a little company uh, in Banfora. Now, when the crisis of COVID-19 came, he lost his job. So he was the only one person providing for the family's needs. So when he lost his job, there was really nothing to eat at home, and it was very difficult, very difficult. And then one day, the church sent our social workers to go and, and have some, uh, what we call here, home visits. When they went to see uh, Nuratu and her, her family, they tried to know how they are going, and really, the father was uh, really sorry to say, where we are right now, we don't have something to eat. And my children, uh, they have uh, done something like two days without eating. So as a father, it was very difficult for him to confess that, but he, he said really, to be honest with you, we don't have something to eat here because I lost my job. So. When the, the church members went back to the center, they, they tried to talk with uh, the pastor and uh, compassion staff. And it's at that time that we received the grants for what I was, I was talking about, the disaster relief fund, our projects. So the, the, I can say two or three days later, the father received a phone call telling him to come at the church. So when coming, he didn't know what we were waiting for him. So when he, he reached the church, they gave him two rice bags, they gave him oil, they gave him soap, and he couldn't imagine how he can receive such things from the church. And Nuratu, who is uh, our beneficiary, at, at, at the time her father was receiving the rice, she started singing, I'm going to eat rice. 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 This be it became a song for her because she couldn't really uh, imagine that now hunger is over and I have something now to eat. So this is just one example of how the support of compassion is really reaching beneficiary. And I can tell you stories like this one are many in Burkina Faso. Churches are really uh, supporting beneficiaries and making difference in their lives. Wow, that is so yeah. amazing. You know, we are feeding the hungry, the local church feeding the hungry in the community. And what an impact. I, I, I love that. Um, sense of him singing with joy because yes. his needs have been met. That is amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, 
What would you like to say to encourage our supporters um, during this difficult time for, for, for so many across the whole world? What would you what would you encourage them with? Okay, really, I have um, I can say I have no words to to express how we are so grateful for your support. You know, if I would compare compassion to a tree, I would say our supporters, you are the roots of this tree. You know, you are the one who are really giving the resources so that the tree can bear some flowers and some fruits that are our beneficiaries. You are the roots. You are the ends of Jesus coming here in Burkina Faso to support our beneficiaries. So really we are, I can say, the, the, the two faces of the same piece, you know? Yeah, here as staff of compassion, we can do nothing without what you are doing, dear supporters. So thank you for what you are giving. Thank you for your hearts. Thank you for your love. Thank you your, for, of your, thank you for your, your hands that are giving with love so that we can support children here in Burkina Faso. And I would like to encourage you. Our beneficiaries like receiving your letters. Really, we have many stories about how beneficiaries, they like receiving your letters. So if you have a little time, please take time, continue writing letters, continue sharing the love of Jesus with those beneficiaries, continue telling them that you are praying for them. You know, they like it. And when they receive your communications, they are so happy. When they receive your pictures, they are very happy. So thank you so much. And I know that we are going to still receive your letters and still have you uh, working together to really uh, re to continue supporting all those children and changing their lives, making a difference in their communities. Amazing. So, it, it, you know, it's such an encouragement to hear, uh, Haruna, that even in this time, we can still write to the children and, that, and yeah. they receive them with a, a joy um, and, and, and a gladness. It's really important that we do that. Haruna, I just want to say um, just a real heartfelt thanks for sharing so openly and honestly as well, so that we can, we can really understand what's happening in your country right now in the nation of Burkina Faso. Yeah. And moreover, so that we can stand with you in prayer as well, my brother, that we can pray together um, for God to intercede in these situations. So I wonder if we could just both spend a, t a time in prayer now. And if you're, if you're watching as a support, you can comment and pray with us as well. Um, and Haruna, do you want to start us off and I'll pray and I'll finish us off. Thank you. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are coming to you together with my brother Phil. And uh, I would like to ask you for beneficiaries in Burkina Faso. Yes. Lord, you see this pandemic, you see COVID-19, and uh, I want to, to ask you to protect each of our beneficiaries from this disease, because you are the one who can protect us, and uh, your blood is our protection from any kind of danger, from any kind of disease. Oh, Lord. May you protect them from COVID-19. May you protect them from malaria. May you, you protect them from any kind of illness that can touch them. Thank you, Lord, because you are our protector. You are the one who can protect us by your blood that was shed on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, because you will be doing so. Lord, I want oh, to pray for the reopening of our centers in Burkina Faso because we need these children to come back in the center so that we can teach them our curriculum. We, we want them to come back. Oh, we want them to be able to gather. Oh, so that we can talk with them, talk about Jesus to them, talk about oh, all kinds of knowledge, teach them. Lord, I pray so that we can see all those centers open and all those activities continuing for the benefits of your loved ones. Thank you, Jesus, because you are faithful and you said that if we ask 
you are the one who will answer. So thank you because we know you are faithful. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Father, I just thank you for your incredible love for the nation of Burkina Faso. Father, and I, I just pray specifically right now in your mighty name, Lord, that as the, um, as the elections take place this month um, in Burkina Faso, Lord, that a peace that surpasses all understanding would, would flow through the people and, and, and through the elections as they happen this month. Lord, that you would protect people and, and Lord, that peace would remain as people go to the ballots and, and to vote. But Father, I finally pray um, for, for, for all the terrorist activity that's been happening in the nation of Burkina Faso. Lord, we've seen snippets in the news and we've heard today about what is happening. But Lord, in your name, I pray that every single child and family member um, is surrounded and protected and the local church is still able to function in the way of going out to meet the needs of these amazing children at this time. Father, that you would surround and protect every single person and, and that would there be no danger to people as, as, as they go into their day-to-day -day lives. So Lord, we commit this to you today. And finally, I pray for my brother, uh, Haruna, and, and all the Compassion staff in the office at Burkina, in Burkina Faso. Lord, um, that you would go with them, that you're beside them, and you've already gone ahead of them, Lord, and, and Lord, that you would continue to guide them in this time, in your precious name, I pray. Amen. Haruna, brother, it's been a real privilege to spend this time with you. Um, thank you so much um, for sharing today. And um, God bless you. And, and we hope to connect again real soon. Okay. Thank you. It was a great pleasure for me too. May God bless you and bless all our supporters. May he continue protecting you. There in the UK, may you continue pouring his blessing on you in the name of Jesus. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye for now. God bless. Wow. Just such a privilege to share that time with Haruna and, and hear everything that's, that, that's happening on the ground in Burkina Faso right now. And you know, I, I'm much like you probably really stirred by not only the effects of of lockdown, of businesses being closed and, and, and local churches being closed uh, and the effect that has on the poorest earning people, uh, which, is, which is bad enough in itself, but to hear of the flooding that has destroyed homes and, and livestock where people have lost everything, yet we hear that homes are going to be restored and rebuilt and, and, and that is amazing. Um, but the, the acts of terrorism as well that we got to hear about, but again to hear that right now, Compassion Children and Families, those who are in church projects or are connected to the church projects, are safe from this um, and are known enough to protect. So I think we should still continue to pray for this as well as we go. Uh, but there's going to be an opportunity for you to give today, if you wish to do so, to invest into, uh, into, into the COVID-19 emergency appeal. Now, your gift will provide vulnerable children and families um, and even the wider community as well with health and stability through hygiene, uh, connecting with them through that and, and food and housing security as well, even in a time such as this. And your donation literally will help the most vulnerable families and communities survive this crisis right now. So maybe as you're prayerfully considering giving to that at the moment, I'm going to tell you how you can do that. You can hit the button or the link that is appearing right now inside the chat function. You'll see it. And if you'd like to donate, you just need to click the link or hit the button. But finally, to say, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and for all your lovely comments as we've gone through this. Uh, we hope you've had um, an amazing time today and that you've enjoyed the update. And, and next time, we'll be hearing from our team um, on the ground in Colombia, uh, which I'm sure will be really insightful and amazing. So we look forward to seeing you then. And bye for now. Good night. God bless.